everybody, Christine Burke here, Forensic Genetic Genealogist, and welcome to the Unknown Humans Remain True Crime Podcast. We are here with case number eight. We are on episode nine, and we are going to talk about NAMA's case UP4533 for a female that was found in Texas on November 1st, 1962 trying to go back and get the oldest cases possible so we can bring attention to all these poor folks that have been just sitting, uh, remaining, unidentified, unknown, um, unrecognized. Yeah, sorry, just doesn't change from case to case. We've got a lot of cases to go through. So, so let's go and take a look at the profile. All right, so here we are in the NAMAS database and our our victim is a black female, uh, believed to be African-American. The body was found on November 1st, 1962 in Harris County, Texas. And her estimated age range is between 40 and 60 years old. Uh, they've got the medical examiner case number here. If, if you're listening to this, um, we also go through it on YouTube and Rumble where you can see the video and look at the case details for yourself. And we are on all kinds of different audio podcasts. And while I'm talking about it, I will mention we've got a Facebook group where if um, hopefully one of these or two of these or three of these cases pique your interest and you'll join us in the Facebook group, Unknown humans remain uh, where we work on these cases on an individual basis so this is again so i'm looking online um, this is i'm just reading through the case file on namas uh, this is a female a black african-american female it says adult pre-60 age between 40 and 60 estimated year of death zero to 1962 so it could have been before that uh, but she was found in November 1962, and they believe um, that she had been wherever she was uh, or deceased for about one year. It says height is estimated and weight is estimated, but nothing is given right here. Unidentified deceased, uh, found November 1st, 1962, and the NAMAS case was created on October 14th, 2008. Long time coming. Oh, goodness. Every time, I'm sorry. Every time I read through these just as I am recording these. So I, it just shocks me every time. Okay. And this is this is the cop who's pretty much seen it all. Um, it unfortunately shocks me every time. So here we have, um, it says, under circumstances of recovery, isolated skull recovered in Harris County. Mm-mm-mm. Torso not recovered, one or more limbs not recovered, one or both hands not recovered. It says condition of remains not recognizable, partial skeletal parts only. Now, when this happens, right, um, you know, we're dealing, I, I try to be so um, considerate here, but we're dealing with a death, unfortunately, and we're dealing with someone that has been out in the elements more than likely, and we have animals and weather and all kinds of other things. So it's very hard to tell when you first hear this about the limbs being missing and things like that. Um, you know, we want to go to foul play, but that's not necessarily the case. It could be the case. Uh but, you know, we've got some animals, we've got some weather, we've got some different things. So we just, we just don't know. But the good thing is using genetic genealogy, we only need a small piece of material or bone or whatever. And that is why genetic genealogy is so important to solving these cases. It says hair color unknown, head hair description unknown or completely bald, because if it's a skull, it's um, just the the skull and the bones, right? No eye color, no eye description, and under physical features, no known information. Of course, hopefully, no clothing and accessories. Those of you that have been listening to these episodes know that we get some crazy stuff 
uh, with regards to what is going on in this case. And let's see, we don't have any images or documents. And so let's go to the map location. And it is right in the middle of what looks to be, I'm zooming out on Highway 90. It's it's in the middle of, I, I, I don't know, it's always tricky when these are found. We've got GPS coordinates here that um, are smack dab in the middle of a house. So, um, and I'm trying to zoom out and see where it is. It is right on the, I would say, the northeast side of Houston, um, right off of, it looks like I-10, although it was calling it, um, it looked like it was also um, Highway 90 and I-10 um, heading out of Houston. They're calling it, um, it looks like it's next to, if you're familiar with, with Houston, the Greater Fifth Ward, the Denver Harbor, Port Houston area, and and goodness, it is like it is like right smack in the middle of the house. <laughs> and so I don't know if that's accurate. Um, when we get these things, there's not really a lot of details. And so I don't know what to tell you that was there. Um, the first thing I always suggest is to research in the area and see, you know, was this housing subdivision there? What was in this area? in I believe it was November of 1962 and we don't really have a lot to go on here um obviously if this if this skull was found at this house um that's a whole nother ball game there uh but I would hope I I don't know I don't know whether to say that they're estimating that and they just picked crazy coordinates or what um but if you're in the Houston area and you would like to, you know, get this woman identified, we'd love to have your help. Um, hang on just one second. I'm going to go and put the information here for the folks that are viewing online. Hang on one second. There we go. So I pulled this up for those of you that are watching the video. Um, we appreciate whatever service that you're listening to or watching. Uh, if you could like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you are in the Houston area and you would like to donate, um, we do have a Give, Send, Go set up to receive donations. Um, as I mentioned, when I talk about these cases and if you've listened to the introduction um, or followed along, uh, to use genetic genealogy on these cases involves uh, getting genetic material. In this case, it would be getting it from the bone, which is some of the toughest and some of the more expensive. It can range anywhere between $2,500, $4,500. And so the police department more than likely, like most police departments don't have the money to take care of this. Uh, they can barely pay their officers and get officers to come to work. Um, and so, you know, if you live in the Houston area and you'd like to get involved with this case, or if you live anywhere in the United States or the world and you're listening to this and you'd like to help us, we do have a, a give, send, go, which is unknown humans remain. And we're trying to raise the money. Like I said, it's anywhere between 25 and probably $4,000, $4,500 to get the bone tested. And then we, myself and um, the ladies um, and gentlemen that work with me who are forensic genetic genealogists, will donate our matching services to get these folks identified. So um, join us in the community on Facebook at Unknown Humans Remain. Check us out at Give, Send, Go. We're on YouTube Rumble. Uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast, we appreciate everything. We just appreciate your support so that we can be the voices for these people that can't speak for themselves. So thank you, and I look forward to talking with you or seeing you again soon.